And I'm so thankful today for what Jesus does in our lives, aren't you? Amen. What a beautiful day. Amen. Hallelujah. If you've got your Bibles, let's turn to Matthew chapter 13, verses 45 and 46. Amen. Matthew chapter 13, verses 45 and 46. Amen. One of the uh, verses that we sang here talked about him being the treasure. That's kind of a part of this passage of Scripture here today. And uh, I do want to read these two passages and then preach from them on the subject of all in. Everybody say all in. Amen. So Matthew chapter 13 verses 45 and 46. And it says again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant in the search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it or purchased it. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, we just love and appreciate you so very much. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. God, just speak to each one of our hearts. Lord, I pray that you will help us, each and every one, to just get closer to you today. Lord, that in our lives we will reach that place of of a greater commitment to your kingdom and to you. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Jesus, that it speaks to our hearts. I thank you for the changes that it's going to make in us today. In Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. We do have an answer to prayer, kind of something to celebrate today. Our computer, uh, of course, uh, was on the fritz on on Tuesday, I guess it was. And first reports from everybody was that the hard drive was gone, which is going to cost us, you know, between a thousand and two thousand dollars to get fixed. Come to find out, after they took it to uh, some place in town here, it was just a what is it, thirty some odd dollar loose wire. And uh, we're back online. We have our computer and our songs and scripture. Amen. Isn't that great? Amen. So I, I started thinking about this quite a while back. And I don't know whether any of you have, um, back in the old days, BC, I like to say, before Christ, I used to do a little bit of gambling um, and uh, playing poker and so forth and, and kind of gave that up as a bad habit whenever, uh, you know, came to God because I just feel like it's just, you know, I, I have better ways to deal with what God has blessed me with. Amen. I want to be a good steward of what God has given me. And everybody said amen. Amen. It's God's money. All of it is. And I know he just asked for, for 10% is the, is the amount that God asked for back from us as being our tithe. Uh, but in reality, everything that we have and own is all his, right? And, uh, and so I just, you know, changed all of that, figured there's a better way of dealing with my money. I'd rather invest it in the kingdom of God than, than to invest it in a possible lottery or in gambling. But I did do some gambling. And it's kind of changed. We used to, uh, we used to play like, uh, just regular poker or blackjack or stuff like that. And, and some of you will remember times like this. Uh, and the first time I can remember playing was I went out of town with a group of people. We moved the town of Fair Harbor over to Zabalas, or most of it. There were 30 some odd buildings we moved out there. Fair Harbor is on the island here, and as right now, it's just kind of a wilderness park right now. So uh, we moved all the buildings out of that place uh, back when I was about 19 or 20 years of age. And, uh, and so, uh, but the whole time I was there, uh, the guys I was with all liked to play poker. And so uh, I, I play poker with them. Now, I'm not advocating this, just so you know. This is before Christ, right? So things I talk about before Christ, that was back then. But you get to the place where you feel like you're, you know, there's sufficient enough that's in the pot and your hand is good enough that you decide that you want to go all in. And you've probably seen people do it nowadays and, and they have this big pile of chips if they're in Vegas or a big pile of money in front of them and, and then there's this bigger pile in the middle and, and for the sake of possibly winning that bigger pile in the middle, sometimes they feel like their hand is, is good enough that they're just going to take it and push everything into the middle of the pile because they're all in. 
In other words, they're not leaving anything to chance. There are people that have made preposterous bets over the years just for the sake of being able to win that pot that's in the middle of the table and have that for their own. I got to thinking about this because I, sometimes the Bible says the people of this world are wiser than, than the people of God. We, we want to come to God and we don't like the all-in mentality, so, so we kind of go partially in. If you'll notice the passage of Scripture that, that I read to you, it's, it involves a parable that Jesus told, and it's a group of parables that Jesus talked about the kingdom of God and, and what's all involved in the various aspects of the kingdom. But then he came to this one that I read about in this passage of Scripture from Matthew, and it talks about a merchant man that is, is looking for pearls. Now, first of all, he has a purpose in his life, and that purpose is that he wants to find the greatest and the best things, the greatest and the best pearls for his own life. So he's gathered himself lots of stuff, lots of pearls. He's got, he's got all different kinds. He's probably searched the world over, and uh, he's got big ones, he's got small ones, he's got ones that have good clarity. He's gathered all this stuff that is around, all these pearls, but it's just not good good enough. He does have a purpose. He's looking for what is going to make a difference. What his goal is, is to find that one pearl of great price that is worth anything else that he has in this world. I, I would propose to you today that all of us as children of God need to have within us the desire that we want the greatest for our lives. Amen. We don't want just just a partial experience in God. We don't want just enough to just get by. We don't want enough just to maybe feel better for today and maybe carry us through to feeling better for tomorrow and the day after. But I would propose to you today that, that we have this same mentality that this merchant man had that we want is what the very best for ourselves and for our families and uh, for those of our loved ones that are around us. The search for something great in life, it should be all consuming for us. It shouldn't be something we do as a pastime just occasionally, but it should be something that we desire each and every day. And it should motivate us each and every day to keep looking if we don't have it yet. Amen. So this merchant man has, has a definite purpose. Now, now having a purpose in life has, gives us a certain amount of joy. How, have you ever noticed that in life, if there's no direction, there's very little joy? Yeah. Have you ever noticed that if there's no direction, there's not even any peace? Because how can you feel good about yourself if you don't have a direction for your life? So having a purpose, having a direction is, is so vital. I would propose to you today, and of course I'm a pastor, so we're preaching on God, right? I mean, we're, that's what we do as pastors. We preach about God. I would propose to you that the greatest thing that you could seek after would be a better relationship with God in your life. Right. Everybody said amen. amen. So the merchant man has has this definite purpose. The Bible tells us that, that Daniel purposed in his heart. Now the thing that Daniel purposed had to do with his relationship with God. He purposed in his heart that he was not going to defile himself with the things that were offered to him from Babylon. If you look at the types and shadows, that would be the world to us. We're not going to be defiled or, or we should purpose within our hearts that we're not going to be defiled with the things that, that currently are in our world that seem to be defiling everything and uh, that we would think is normal and right in society. Everybody say, I'm not going to be defiled. Well, that was kind of pitiful, wasn't it? We're not going to be defiled. There should be a purpose. Listen, if you want to be God's, there is a removing yourself from this world, but there's also a moving yourself into the kingdom of God. So it's a twofold, twofold operation within our lives, one of leaving that behind and one of taking on the character and the principle that, uh, that God wants us to take on in our lives. And so we must purpose within ourselves that we will not be defiled. Now I have to tell you something. Having a purpose of seeking after God does not mean that all is going to go well all the time in your life. Because Daniel's purpose ended up putting him in a lion's den. Now, now, do you not think 
that just for a few moments when he was cast in there, he's thinking, now did I really do the right thing here? Maybe the... <laughs> Maybe I made a mistake in all of this. Maybe I should have just partaken of the king's goods and, and not worried about not defiling myself. But I don't think that that would have lasted very long, if at all, in his mind. Because as soon as he got in there and those lions are, are around there in the den and not a one of them is coming towards him. And not a one of them is trying to get at him. I think he felt like, yeah, that's my God. Listen, just because you make a purpose in your life to, to desire something more in the kingdom of God doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to go through a lion's den. Doesn't mean in, uh, as with Joseph that you're not going to necessarily end up in a place that, that's not comfortable for you. But I can tell you something that is absolute. If your goal is to have more of God in your life, that you want the very best in your life, I can guarantee you that my God's not going to leave you alone in the time of your distress and discomfort. Because as it was for the three Hebrew children that, that would not bow to Nebuchadnezzar's idol, there was a fourth one that was walking in the fire with them. And I'll guarantee you there was somebody in that lion's den with Daniel that stopped those lions from coming at him. Uh, just uh, our God is so faithful. It's sometimes awesome when you begin to think about it and the things that you've gone through and know that God will be with you through it all. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So not only does he have a purpose, but he also, he wants the very best. If we get all the things that we really want in this life, uh, is that going to be worth it? If you look at this world and you see all that the world seems to think that's important for our lives, and you get it all, and you have it all, Will you be satisfied at the end of it all and think that, yeah, I've given my life towards a good thing? Or is it that we should be seeking for the very best for our lives? Young people, I'll tell you something. There's nothing better in this world that we live in that you can do than give your life to God and seek after more of Him. Amen. Not worry about what's going on around you. Not worried about what the world is going to do. Just seek for God because God will take care of you in the midst of this generation that we live in. The third thing about this merchant is that not only did he have a purpose in his life, not only was he seeking for the very best for his life or what he wanted, but he also was able to recognize what was the best. There's a lot of people that have considered. I had, we have people in our lives all the time that will look at our lives and say, well, is living for God really worth it or is it not? And, and maybe I should just stay the way I am and they might consider it for a little while. They don't recognize and nor can they recognize that this is the very best life that they can have. They don't recognize because somehow their, their eyes have been clouded by the things of this world and the enemy makes sure they don't see it clearly and, and they don't recognize the best for what it is. This is the best life there is. This is the best way to live that there is. This is peace in our hearts and a joy that comes not from this world, not from having things, but comes from having the Holy Ghost down in us that helps us to see and to know that God God is great in our lives. Amen. And so he was able to recognize the very best. I've, I've used this example before in a few messages and I'll use it again now. Um, I don't know if you've ever, ever seen a, a, a pig trough, right? Or a pigsty where there's a group of pigs. And, and uh, I don't know if you've ever slopped pigs, but I've seen it happen occasionally where people have done it and been on a couple of farms and that. And they'll come and they'll pour, you know, all this stuff into the trough for the pigs. Any of you, you, some of you are nodding your heads. You've been there, seen that. So, and they'll have all the, you know, like the leftover corn cobs and the leftover, all of it. Uh, and pigs are omnivorous, so probably leftover meat and some of it rotting and all the rest of it. And they'll put it all together and they'll slop the pigs. In other words, they'll drop all that slop into the trough. And, and the pigs will come and, and my goodness, they're snorting and, you know, you, anybody ever seen this? 
They're snorting and they're just over there and they're trying to get into it even before it's finished pouring. And, and all of a sudden, one pig will find something that he thinks is just great. He'll find an, an ear of corn maybe that's not entirely eaten. And he'll grab that ear of corn and he'll just go running with it. This is mine! And uh, just feeling like it's such a great thing, this old moldy piece of vegetable that he's got in his mouth. All the rest of the pigs will leave what they're doing and start chasing it around because they think that he's got something valuable. I want you to know something today. This world has a pig mentality. It's a, the, the psychology of this world is if somebody else says it's good, let's all chase after it. If somebody else says this is valuable, let's all go after it. Let's, and, and so people think money's a great thing. We're all just scrambling to try and make more and more and more and more. Or the position or fame or whatever it is. But it's a pig philosophy. Somebody else thinks it's good and even though it's not good and it may lead you to the wrong place, it seems like everybody goes chasing after it. Recognizing the best, I want some really good things for myself, my wife, my family, my sons, my daughter, their spouses, my 12 grandchildren. I want the very, very best for them. Now, I'm not going to be able to help them to find the very best unless I'm able to find the best. And so I've got to recognize it for what it is. I've got to recognize that there are some great things that we should be seeking after that are worth seeking after and worth chasing. I want my walk with God to be the very, very best that it can be. There's some things I have to change for that to happen. And Lord willing, some of those things I'm going to continue to change to seek after God in greater measure in my own life. I haven't arrived yet at the place where I think that, that I've got it all. I haven't arrived yet at a place where I think that I can relax and, and take it easy. I want, I want more of God in my life. Have you ever thought about your prayer life? Have you ever thought about how much greater it could be or how much greater it can be? I want a better prayer life. Amen. Some things that we need to seek after, we need to seek after with everything that is in us. I want my walk with God to be great. Not just average, I want it to be great. Now, I'm never going to preach a general conference. I'm never going to probably preach too many big meetings. But if I can preach so that the lives in front of me are changed, then I'll have accomplished the will of God in my life. But I want to do it better. I want those things to be better. My wife and I have talked about should a time come when we retire from the ministry, if I sit in a church where there's another pastor there, I want to be the very best saint that I can be. I don't want to be partly in and, and, and just sitting on a pew and taking time till hopefully Jesus takes me out of here and takes me home. I want to be the very best that I can be at it because I think that's worthwhile to seek after good things in our lives. Don't you? Amen. I want a good church. I want, I want a church that, and honestly, I love this church. I love the worship and the praise that we have. I, I just love it that we love God and want to give ourselves to God. But you know what? I want it to be even better than what it is. I want the fire of God to fall in this place. And, and I want to see more new people coming in. I want our baptismal tank to be filled and people baptized in the name of Jesus more often. We need to be doing that. I want to see this, this altar at altar times at the end of services filled with people that are, are seeking for more of God, that, that want a greater relationship and a deeper relationship with Him. We've got to recognize the fact that, that these are great things. These are important things. And they're not going to come if we're not looking for them or we don't recognize them. First of all, there's got to be a desire for those things in our lives. And, and then there's got to be that recognition. Yes, this is worth it. This is worth chasing after. This is worth going all in for. So I guess I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. The, the merchant after seeking for what is the very best in his life, recognizing it for what it is. He finally found what he was looking for and he decided that it was going to be worth not a partial payment, 
But it was going to be worth everything in his life. So he did something that, that I think that in giving ourselves to God that we should be doing as well. He went and sold everything that he had so that he could purchase the one thing that was of incredible value to him. He went and sold whatever it was that he had attained, all the other items in his, his list there. Maybe he went home and he started looking over all these other pearls that he'd collected over the years. And when compared with the pearl of great price, began to take each and every one of them and say, doesn't even come close. Doesn't come close. No, nope, this one here that I thought was so great back then, no, nope, doesn't even compare to that pearl of great price. So many things that we can collect over time in our lives that we think have great value. And the end result is when it comes down to the kingdom of God and our relationship with God, there is nothing that even comes close. There's nothing that even compares. Let's stand together, shall we? Some, sad to say, when they have found this pearl of great price, will try and convince themselves that it isn't so great. Just because if they can decrease the value of a relationship with God down to a common level of this world, then, then it becomes not great in their eyes. And sad to say, there are some that will find this pearl and just feel like the price is more than they're willing to pay to have it in their lives. Oh, you mean I'm, I'm going to have to change the way that I'm living? You mean this means that some of the habits I've had in my life before, those have got to go, and I know God's going to help me with it, but really, you know. Yeah. There was a young rich man that came to Jesus one time, asked him the question, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus looked at him and, uh, well, you need to keep the commandments. His answer was, well, this I've done from my youth up. He was a good man. We'd look at him and say, he's a credit to society. He, took, he gave money to the poor. He did good things in his life. He honored his mom and dad. He didn't have any idols. And all the rest of the things that were entailed and, and were in the, the Old Testament laws. He did all of those from his youth up. Jesus said, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor and come and follow me. And the Bible says this of him. Well, it says in between Jesus loved him. When, it, when After he answered about keeping the commandments from his youth up, and he said, go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor and come and follow. Right. Now, just the opposite is true of him to this merchant man. The Bible says he went away sorrowful because he had a lot. Yeah, right. But you see, he didn't recognize that all he had was so vastly inferior to what he was going to get that he was willing to sell it all. To go all in. To push all of it onto the table. Because you see, this walk is by faith, believing. Believing that what God has for us is far greater than anything that we could acquire that we can lay our hands on. And it's there. The merchant finds the pearl in a price and a voice maybe that he can't control so well. He said, he asked the price, price was given. He said, I'll take it. I'm all in. I'm all in. Not partially in. I'm not going to give Jesus just a portion of my life. But right now, 
today. I'm all in. This altar is open if you want to come. Everything else that you may have in this life is not worth, not one iota compared to what Jesus can do in your life.